Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. this lecture 37 with a thought process from D. W. D. Eschenhauer. He was a you know past president of USA long time back around 1960s kind of thing right. He had told every gun that is made, every warship launch, every rocket fire signifies in the final sense a theft from those who hunger are not fed and those who are cold and not clothed. When I am talking about this rocket propulsion engine, I must communicate this message which was similar to mine and told by a USA president who always try to, you know, USA try to have a war and then, you know, all sorts of kind of things. So, it is very important for us to understand these things. We should use the technology for the peaceful coexistence, not for a war. So, let us recall what we have learnt in the last lecture. I was uh, looking at basically the performance of rocket engine. Of course, before that I had given you uh, a brief introduction to the rockets and its utility and other things, right. And when we uh, discussed the performance of rocket engines, we basically made some assumptions. Those are ideal, you know assumptions, but however, it can be useful for the real analysis as well, because we have seen that it is not very, you know, different than that. Of. What is that? That we talked about thrust coefficient, right. And we had derived an expression for thrust coefficient, right. So, we will uh, go on discussing that and uh, by knowing the thrust coefficient, we can also find out the thrust or vice versa, right. So, if you look at the thrust is basically thrust is P T 2 that is nothing but your chamber pressure into A T, A T is the throat area of the nozzle, right. And keep in mind that I will be using a star and A T a star for me it is same for the time being. And C T is your nothing but your thrust coefficient. If I know the thrust coefficient and I know the chamber pressure, I know the throat diameter, I can find out thrust or other way around, right. That means, if I could evaluate the thrust, right, maybe static thrust in a, uh, in an, in a laboratory and then I know the chamber pressure, I know the throat area, I can get the thrust coefficient experimentally. But what we are derived an expression that is meant for an ideal case, right. This expression C t, which is basically derived for an ideal case, ideal in the sense making ideal assumptions like not losses and other things we have not considered, right. And if you look at this expression, which I have shown here, it is basically a function of gamma, it is a function of P e exit pressure and also the chamber pressure, we always talk in terms of ratios, right. And other one is your atmosphere pressure and the chamber pressure P T 2, chamber means basically combustion chamber of the rocket engine, right. And a area ratio A E by A star or I can say A E by A T, right. And keep in mind that when this P E if it is goes on decreasing, that means P e will be reducing, goes on decreasing. What will happen? This term, right, will be coming closer to the P a, right, it may happen. And what happens to this term for the same chamber pressure? P e is decreasing, this term will be smaller right. If I take gamma is uh, something 
two, right? And it is point, uh, you know, like one point two point two. That is basically five times into one point two. This will be coming around one by six. So the six times, you know, you know, then this is a very very small number. Yes or no? That means this thrust is reducing, but this became a bigger quantity, right? Because one minus this. Right? If it is 1 minus that and it will be thinking that it will be going towards 1 basically 0.99 or something 98 as the P e goes on decreasing. So, maximum thrust can be obtained basically if you look at when the nozzle is fully expanded. This is another way of looking at it like means if P e is equal to P a right, this term will be 0 and then the thrust coefficient will be basically that is root over 2 by gamma plus 1 gamma power to the gamma plus 1 divided by gamma minus 1 and into you know 2 gamma square divided by gamma minus 1 in the bracket 1 minus p by p t power to the gamma divided by gamma minus 1 right. And that is the maximum thrust one can think of. So, what you can see that it is only a function of P e and P t 2 and gamma, right. Now, if P e is as I told P e is goes on decreasing, what will be happening? It will be this became it will goes on increasing, right, yes or no? This term will be goes on increase C t naught will be go on will go on increasing, right. And what is the effect of gamma then, right? I can vary these uh, parameters, you know, gamma from 1.1 and to 1.4, right? If you look at what is happening, I am plotting over P e by P t 2, right? And this P e can be same as that of the P t 2, is the one situation, right? Yes or no? It can be worst case, then it will be 1. Of course, it is we would not be considering. If you consider, then what will happen? This will be 0, that means the thrust coefficient will be 0, right, and we would not get anything out of it. So, there is a useless to talk about it. So, therefore, we will consider the P e by P t 2 around 0.1 to 0 0.001 when it is 0 0.001, when P e is very, very small as compared to the P t 2. If I take the P t 2 as 10 mega Pascal, right. If I take P is something 0 0.1 mega Pascal atmospheric pressure, what it would be then? 0 0.001, right. 10 mega Pascal, if you look at 0 0.01, right, kind of things here, is not it? If I take P e as 0 0.1 mega Pascal, right, and P t 2 is 10 mega Pascal, right. And what will be P e by P t 2 will be 0 0.1 divided by 10, that will be 0 0.01, yes or no. So, you will be here and as it is goes on like you know it can be 0 0.01 mega Pascal, right, then it became 0 0.001 it will be for the same atmosphere, same chamber pressure. And if I am saying 0 0.001 mega Pascal P, it will be these values. You see that the C f, oh sorry, this is C t, C t star, right, and C t naught, and it is basically what you call decreases with increase in P e by P t 2, right that is one, right. And it is the gamma effect is very, very predominant in the whenever the pressure is low. That means, exit pressure is very low as compared to the chamber pressure. But as the exit pressure is you know and the ratio of exit pressure and chamber pressure becomes higher, then gamma effect is negligibly small. All are coming to the almost similar value. Now, you can look at a situation where this you know P e becomes 0. So, if it is 0, this term 
will be 0, right. So, we will get a maximum, you know, thrust coefficient and when it is nozzle will fully expand, right, that is the condition we are talking about. No, no, P e is 0, like you go to the vacuum, right, where P e is equal to P a, right, the vacuum is, right, P e is equal to P a, vacuum condition in the deep sea, I mean it cannot be 0, but you can assume it is tending towards 0 or something like that, okay. So, then you will get an expression that is, you know, C t max is only function of gamma, nothing else it is only C t max is a function of gamma. That means, you know we always go for a smaller values of gamma, right. So, that you can have a, you know, higher C t max kind of thing, right. So, if you look at this, you know, you can interpret and you one can, what is the implication of that, that is that you will be designing for a certain pressure ratio, of course if we are assuming it to be fully expanded, right. And what we will do now, we will look at this expression, the generalized expression for the thrust, which is having no, you know, what to call condition being placed in the sense, the actual, uh, what to call thrust without any simplifications, right. And look at vary this parameter, what are the things will be varying, we will be varying A e by A star and we will be varying P e by P t and we will be varying P a by P t 2 and we are taking gamma as a constant that is 1.2, right. If you look at this is being plotted C t versus the A e by A star, right. A by A star is your area ratio that is exit area by the throat area, right. And keep in mind that this is being logarithm like it is from 1 to 100 kind of things, right. So, what you can note from here that is if I take this pressure P t by P e as a 2, right, it is C t is a lower than 1, right, okay. And it is goes on decreasing and of course, and when you go up increasing this, you will find that there is a increase in the, it goes on increasing with the area ratio and reach a peak value here, you know, and then it is decreases. And this area ratio of the nozzle is corresponding to fully expanded nozzle, right. That is the optimum thrust or the maximum thrust you are getting with respect to P is equal to P A. When exit pressure is equal to P A, you will get fully expanded. So, therefore, you will get a maximum. So, if you look at this as you goes on what you call increasing this value, right, P t by 2 by P e, what is the meaning? For a particular chamber pressure, you are going on decreasing P exit pressure or the exit pressure, right, P e or the exit pressure, you are go on decreasing. That is why it is increasing for a particular chamber pressure, right. And you will see that it is similar in nature that means this is you know if it is if i take a let's say 20 i'll take 20 pressure ratio that is pt2 by pe if it is it is goes on increasing as the area ratio increases and reach a peak value right and then it decreases what it indicates this this peak value is the maximum the what you call thrust coefficient or thrust one can get and corresponding to the fully expanded nozzle. Is that clear? That means, in this zone what I will call, I can call this zone is as a over expanded, right. And what about this portion? If I take this portion from here, you know, this portion here onwards, this will be under expanded nozzle, right, okay. Now, and one is fully expanded, you will get the peak value, both the side, the thrust coefficient is decreasing. Now, which one will choose? 
right which one will be more you know better because if i assume that i am when i am designing let's say i am talking about let's say i'll take for the 10 like i am having same here and there is another here same right i am having same ct value that is 1.2 if i take these values you know right one is this side is over expanded this is under expanded right which one i will choose area ratio and why it is a very simple logic i will talk about it right because in this case if i choose this area ratio you know if i choose this under expanded area ratio so the you know under expanded case for the same thrust coefficient of 1.2 for the pressure ratio of p e by p t 2 right of 10 so you will get that area ratio will be around maybe 1.4 kind of the, because this is 1.5 right this is 2 right so this will be 1.5 but if i take here it is around 4 that means i am having a bigger nozzle a e by a star is 4 in one case it is 1.4 right this will be around 1.4 so if you look at for the same thrust coefficient i am getting that means the same thrust level i'll be getting for the same chamber pressure right isn't it same throat area are you getting a point so therefore here I will be using a smaller this thing smaller nozzle divergent portion will be much smaller. So, my weight will be reduced and my cost will be reduced right and payload I can carry more for the same engine same kind of thrust level. So, therefore, it is advisable to go for a over expand under expanded nozzle than that of the over expanded right and from the, that point of view, but there might be several other point. If I look at the other way around, you know, can I not go beyond this? For example, if I am talking about this, can I not go over like this? Yes or no, right? That is one question I would like to ask. Let us look at what we are observing here. here. That means, if I go on this increasing this P T 2 chamber pressure by exit pressure ratio, you know, you will find that it is again increasing and putting a peak values and then decreasing and of course, it goes to a whenever you know it become a maximum value will get of C T that is 2.246 when P T 2 by P E is equal to infinity. That means, the P E is 0 right exit pressure is 0 or as you told like it will be occur when it is in a vacuum condition of course, if it is fully expanded right. Otherwise, you can have expansion which is very very low right so and if i will you know that is and you will see that that there is a value of 33.3 you know beyond that there is not really much value you are increasing because this is increasing and then it is almost this maximum value is almost becoming like that so you are not really gaining more except that you are as I am going for higher pressure ratios, then my nozzle size if you look at it is become 40, 100 you know kind of things is very, very big if I want to even operate at a maximum value. So, it is a very big. So, you are not really gaining much beyond the pressure ratio of 33.3 generally people restrict to that right. So, and if I uh, if you look at if I join these peak values and this line is known as line of the optimum thrust coefficient that means it is basically maximum thrust coefficient or the thrust coefficient corresponding to the maximum thrust right and there is a limit because if you use this line you know beyond this as i told then there will be also the flow will be separated now why flow will separate what is the reason because if it is over expanded then what will happen let us look at it, I mean what really will happen. Let us say that this is a what you call a conversion diable nozzle and this is a throat region, this is your exit and the pressure if you look at this is your you know throat where Mach number is occurring, the pressure is changing decreasing and it became you know same as that exit pressure for the nozzle and of course, the velocity increases 
as the flow takes you know expanded in the divergent portion of the nozzle right so then if you assume that you are having a shorter nozzle right what is happening you are having a pressure which is p right which is lower than the if i say this is a, you know p a expanded fully and then it is that means this is higher that means there is a some more expansion can take place right that means it is under expanded in this case right but if you consider that you know there is another case where it is not p e is not equal to this thing but rather it is p a right that means it is expanded beyond this pressure and then the p e is basically right is a smaller than p a and if it is smaller then what will happen there will be formation of shock and particularly this shock can be formed it can be oblique shock it can be at a you know when it is very closer to that there will be what you call the shock will be formed at the exit but if it is p e is less than p a and then shock you know the what you call or a little bit you know this thing then the flow separation will take place that means if the this is occurring if p e is you know and p a ratio is less than 0.3 right kind of things then naturally the shock the boundary layer will be separated because the adverse pressure gradient right so then when it is separated then what will happen losses will incur and then one cannot really operate under this condition so therefore it is being you know like uh, this line is being considered that where the is be uh, you know flow is likely to separate right of course it may differ if when you are using various kinds of other nozzle like plug nozzles and then bell nozzles and the conical nozzle generally you know conical and bell nozzle is being used kind of thing so this you should keep in mind and uh, therefore whenever you are designing you will be restricting the your operation and generally preferable that let us summarize what we have learned from this that more desirable to run a rocket engine under expanded condition that is left to the optimum values what we had seen rather than the over expanded because of you know area penalty and also it will lead to the flow separations right due to the formation of shock and there will be losses also due to the formation of shock so therefore and use a shorter nozzle with reduced weight and size that i have already emphasized because and in increasing the pressure ratio improves the performance but improvement diminishes above 33.3 right we are not really because we are go on increasing the area ratio that means weight and size but we are not getting that much of you know gain in the thrust coefficient or the thrust level so therefore that has to be restricted and large nozzle exit area required at a high pressure ratios implication for the space application because we cannot avoid suppose we want to send some you know uh, deep space then naturally i have to expand otherwise it will be not nice you know it it will be you know like not giving you the desired thrust what you need so that has to be kept in mind now if you look at whatever we have looked at the thrust coefficient keep in mind that it is talking about the performance of the nozzle it is not function of the temperature right of the combustion chamber it is a function of what pressure area ratio gamma exit pressure ambient pressure all those things right that means this parameter is talking about only the performance of the nozzle but we need to understand how well the combustion is taking place for that we need to define a parameter right and let us uh, define a, another parameter what we will be using is characteristic velocity that is basically c star is equal to pt2 a star divided by m dot p that is the mass flow rate of propellant through the nozzle right that is the amount of mass flow rate and we you keep in mind that we always talk about you know condition known as choked condition that means the rocket nozzle is all the time or most of the time is choked so we will be using the term that choked mass flow rate we know we have already derived this thing 
is m dot is equal to p t 2 a star root over r t t 2 and uh, of course, in the numerator root over gamma then multiplied by 2 by gamma plus 1 power to the gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma minus 1. This we have already deri derived and discussed several times, right. If I just substitute over here in this equation, you know, here, what I will get? You will look at that p t 2 by a star will cancel it out, right. So, what you will get is the, you know, this c star is basically in terms of you know gamma that is 1 over gamma in the bracket gamma plus 1 divided by 2 power to the gamma plus 1 divided by gamma minus 1 t t 2 and r u, r u is the universal gas constant, m is the molecular weight of the gas which will be expanded in the nozzle, right. And keep in mind that gamma is changing when it is a going through the nozzle, but we are assuming it to be constant, okay because that value is not really much changing, right. And what it indicates this characteristic velocity and how it is functionally? If you look at this expression of equation 17, you can see that c star is a function of the chamber temperature that is T T 2 and the molecular weight of the gas and also the gamma, these are the function. But what it indicates? It indicates the capability of, of the combustion chamber that can produce certain pressure, like if you go to the basic definition, chamber pressure per the you know mass flow rate for a certain fixed value of mass flow rate of propellant per unit cross sectional area of throat for that how much pressure it can produce that it indicates that is the capability which is indicated but it is basically independent of if you look at beauty of this is independent of the temp, uh, pressure chamber pressure although it is definition it is there but if i look at this expression equation 17 it is independent of pressure it is dependent on temperature when you talk about com, com, temperature it is basically how good is combustion is you know it in other words you can uh, use this parameter as a performance parameter uh, indicating how good the combustion is, right. So, and as I told C star is a function of basically gamma T T 2 and uh, molecular weight and if you look at if I want to have high C star, whether I want to have high C star or I want to have low C star or the characteristic velocity, what I want. How can I say that now, right. Now, what do we need? We need to have higher ISP, we need to have higher thrust, you know these are the requirements. So, therefore, we need to look at those things, whether we can relate this C star and thrust coefficient or the characteristic velocity or the thrust coefficient to the thrust or not or the ISP or not. Then only we can talk about, is not it. But if I want to have C star to be higher, naturally I should have a higher combustion chamber that is combustion chamber temperature that is T T 2 and lower molecular weight, you know, because molecular weight that means lighter propellant I should be using. And of course, the gamma even can have a lower values, you know, so that you can have a higher this thing. So, from the combining the definition of thrust coefficient and equation 17, I can have C T is equal to p t by p 2 a star, then thrust is basically c t p t 2 a star, right. This is from the basic definition. That means, thrust is basically uh, you know thrust coefficient multiplied by chamber pressure that is p t 2 and a star is the throat area. But if you look at definition of characteristic velocity and substitute this value for p t 2 by a star, we will get a basically thrust is equal to m dot p that is the propellant mass flow rate c star and c t. That means, if I want to have a higher thrust, then naturally I should have higher thrust coefficient and also the higher characteristic velocity of course, for a particular uh, mass flow rate of propellant or if I want to there is a limitation in these both quantities. So, naturally I will have to enhance the mass flow rate of the propellant. 
So, ISP if you look at it is C star by C t, this is by, from the basic definition by G. That means, if I want to have a higher what you call ISP naturally, I have to enhance this and I have to enhance this, but there is a limitation on thrust coefficient. There will be also limitation of the C star, you know, that is why we cannot really go beyond certain ISP as I had, uh, you know, discussed in the last lecture. That is, you know, this uh, something in the uh, solid propellant we are having limitation of something 350 of ISP. ISP, I mean, is the C condition and that is uh, what you call in, the, in second, right, in terms of second. So, if you look at the C star and C t, that is as the performance parameter of the combustion chamber, right. C star means it indicates how good the combustion chamber is working in converting the fuel into the certain temperature, right, or how good the combustion is and, and the C t is talking about the nozzle performance, right. Now, taking this in mind, we can define a combustion efficiency, right this is basically, you keep in mind, this is eta combustion is equal to C star actual divided by C star ideal. Ideal I can get from this expression equation 17, right, C star, but then actual how I will get? What I will do? I will have a test rig, right, where I can measure the mass flow rate of the propellant, which is passing through it, like this, if you look at the equation 16, that is m dot p, I can measure. I can measure the chamber pressure, I know the throat area, I can get actual one, right. So, if you look at this combustion efficiency is very, very, you know, closer to 1, that means it will be 0 0.9, 8, 9, 9 sometimes, even 9, 7, you know, like it will get. So, therefore, it is good enough to talk about even calculate ideal one while designing, okay. But we generally use a value of particular kind of engine, then look at while designing, we have not tested it, you know, we cannot really test. So, we uh, take this combustion efficiency and use it. Similarly, we can also define a thrust effectiveness that is uh, epsilon t, that is C t actual divided by C t ideal. C t ideal I can get from the equation 15 and C t actual I can conduct experiment and find it out. While designing, we will be using this you know, epsilon t values and we know the ideal one, we can estimate the actual one and then carry out the design process. So, the beauty of this performance parameter, I have already discussed that you can separate it out, you know, and look at it and, uh, and then look at this efficiency. This can be used as a design tool for the rocket engine. So, let us look at the variation I did not really discuss there, but let us look at now the characteristics, you know, velocity, how it is varying with temperature, right. So, if you look at uh, like it is uh, from the expression, it is very clear and if I take two gamma values, gamma 1.2 and gamma 1.4, you see this characteristic velocity is increasing with the chamber temperature and four per, for both the gamma values. and keep in mind that this gamma uh, 1.2, that means low gamma value is having higher characteristic velocity and a higher temperature, the differences is much higher as compared to the low temperature, this, that is one thing. And we cannot really go on increasing this, because if I want to have a higher ISP, naturally I will have to go on increasing this characteristic velocity. But if I go beyond something 3000, you know, 500 kind of things, then naturally what will happen? Dissociation will occur. Then I cannot really go for that, you know, it will be, you will be reducing temperature. So, there is a restriction. Generally, people use something 2500 to 3500 or sometimes people say 2700 to 3500 kind of thing zone where they will be operating, right. So, now let us summarize what we have learnt. Uh, so far, this uh, characteristic velocity, which is basically thermodynamic performance and strong pressure ratio effect, as I told you, but uh, rapidly diminishing return about 33.3 that we have learned in the from the thrust coefficient curve, right, versus area ratio, right, for different pressure ratio and higher uh, T c, that is basically T t 2, T c is nothing but T t 2 chamber temperature value, desirable for higher 
high speed, but problem is that the more the higher the temperature, right, then the heat transfer will be more, that is a one problem. But again higher the temperature, then dissociation will occur, right. So, that means, you know, it, it will be consumed in the process of dissociation, whatever being released. So, it will be again inefficient. Therefore, practical limit being used as I told something 2750 to you know 3500, some people use 2500 to 3500 Kelvin kind of thing. These are all design you know thumb rule kind of thing one can say, depending on the propellant, because it will be depend the temperature what you can get will be dependent on the type of propellant you are using, right. So, the low value of molecular weight is desirable as I mentioned that you know molecular weight will be lower because favoring particularly the hydrogen based fuels and therefore, you can get higher ISP because characteristic velocity will be higher. Even thrust coefficient if you look at one can also get that. So, now we will I mean of course, the low values of gamma is desirable as I already demonstrated through the you know characteristic velocity plot right. So, therefore, these are the things you should keep in mind and we can learn by just carrying out a simple analysis about the performance of the rocket engine. So, I will take an example in a rocket engine hot gases at uh, 2500 Kelvin and chamber pressure of 10 mega Pascal is expanded fully in a CD nozzle with a throat area of 0 0.15 meter square to the ambient pressure right for producing thrust. And we need to determine exit velocity right characteristic velocity ideal thrust coefficient thrust and specific impulse and molecular weight you can take 25 kg per kilo mole and specific heat ratio gamma 1.25 right we have taken in this example. So, if you look at assuming flow in the nozzle to be ideal we can determine this uh, velocities and uh, keep in mind this is gamma like 2 gamma r u gamma minus 1 molecular weight T T 2 and uh, this is P e by, by P T 2 power to the gamma divided by gamma minus 1 right. We will substitute because all these things we know and uh, gamma is 1.25 and the R u is the universal gas A314 and molecular weight 25 and temperature is given 2500 and uh, the pressure P e is 0.1 mega Pascal that is same as that of the exit pressure or the ambient pressure right. We are assuming it to be fully expanded nozzle that is again and uh, you know uh, kind of things and which is given in the problem that is fully expanded right. So, and 10 atmosphere uh, is the chamber pressure. So, when you substitute values you will get 2883.4 meter per second right. Similarly, we can determine characteristics velocities by just substituting values which we have talked about and all are given. So, you will get 1385.59 meter per second. So, ideal thrust optimum coefficients and when you substitute these values, because this is fully nozzle expanded. So, we can substitute we will get, we are getting something 2.08 you know kind of things which is quite good right. And uh, the specific impulse can be determined as C star and C t right, uh, this g and you will get you know there will be and you will get 293.85 second you are getting right, which is you know uh, solid propellant kind of engines you can think of. Similarly, we can determine the thrust produced by this rocket engine as basically you know C t star C t and P t 2 and A star. We know all those things we will substitute it is something 3.12 mega Newton is a quite a high power you know a high thrust engine. Right. So, we will with this we will stop over and we will continue.